Hi there, welcome to Shiloh Tabernacle London. We're located in South East London in Woolwich Dockyard, Block 1, Unit 9, Dockyard Industrial Estate, Woolwich Church Street, SC18 5PQ. Join us for our Bible study every Friday from 7.30 to 9pm. And you can't miss our Sunday services packed with prayer, vibrant worship and a powerful word. First service is 9am to 10.30, followed by our family service from 10.30 to 12.30. And now, for the best part, let's get into the word. Thank you. Let us put our hands together for these wonderful young ladies and these gentlemen on the machines. Come on, somebody bless the Lord for their lives. In the name of Jesus. You're going to put up your hands above your head. Let's honor the blessed Holy Ghost. Come on. Let us bless the Holy Ghost. Say something as you honor the Holy Spirit. That's the reason without him, it's just another gathering. So honor the Holy Ghost. Bless him. Bless him in your words. Tell him how much you love him, the Holy Spirit. Tell him a Holy Spirit, senior pastor. Of Shiloh Tabernacle, we honor you, we reverence you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This church say amen. Glory to God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Welcome everybody to Shiloh. Those joining us online and those of you in the house will bless the Lord for each and every one of you. I believe that our lives will not and shall not remain the same in Jesus' name. I want you with me to celebrate and honor the presence of the man of uh, the man of the house uh, Pastor Guma and the uh, first lady of the house Apostle uh, Apostle we love you, we honor you in Jesus mighty precious name put your hands together for yourself Shiloh, come on bless the name of the Lord is that how you appreciate yourself? <laughs> amen and amen Bless the name of the Lord. Church, bless the name of the Lord. Um, I want to delve deeper in talking about as we are going to have communion and we're going to make decrees over this month of July. Prophetic decrees. I want you to be very intentional in this month of July. It's not an ordinary month. As we were praying here on Friday, pastor was leading us in prayer. And I was moving up and down the aisle. And this scripture came. He was reading a different scripture, but it's in, it was in alignment with the scripture that came into my spirit. Actually, they were, the scriptures were linking into each other. Um... He was talking about, I think, um, that all animals, I think all creation looks up to him. Their eyes look up to him and he provides them food in the rightful time. That's what he was leading us in prayer. And as I was praying, and and, and then he made a statement. Everybody, as you pray, say that, um, that, Lord, this month an encounter will not miss you. So as I was praying over there, we were praying the same thing. I just opened my eyes and looked at him. I continued praying. I knew, you know, there is nothing as sweet when you get synced in the Holy Spirit and are praying the same thing and you have that confirmation. For me, I was actually saying to the Lord that, Lord, as the servants lift up their eyes unto their master, as the mistress says, as the maids lift up their eyes eyes unto their mistresses expectantly, this month I lift my eyes to you. So that Psalms, I believe, 120, is it 23? Um, those of you who are Bible readers, you can check it out. Um, this is not the message, but I just want, we are just passing there for the sake of you capturing this scripture and make it your own. Can we start from verse 1, please? It says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord. And then it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servants look to to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid servant, as the eyes of a maid servant 
to the hand of her mistress so our eyes that captures me so much in verse 2 the last portion so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy can you uh, uh, let me read an amplified classic behold as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy and loving kindness to us so this month I want you to purpose to look up to the Lord expectantly so when the eyes of a servant look to the hand of their master they are looking to that hand for provision for security their hand in the Bible denotes authority or power are you hearing me so the hand of the Lord symbolizes God's power God's authority so we look up to you for our deliverance we look up to you for our rescue as I was praying this word came clearly in my spirit and I could hear the Holy Spirit whisper and said this month of July is gonna be a month of extraordinary encounters with the person of Jesus and extraordinary miracles I'm not just speaking for the sake of exciting for the sake of exciting you you see when God releases a word it's up to you to embrace and walk in that word so what do you do when you hear it's a month of extraordinary encounters with the person of Jesus Christ and extraordinary miracles that means I am going to seek the Lord this month of July even extraordinarily my prayer is gonna be uncommon praise the name of the Lord are you hearing what I'm saying? So this morning I told my wife that today, even if I've been fasting, I'm, I'm adding another gear. I said starting Monday, uh, overturn the saucepans, I want to have just only um, blended soup for this month. Why? Are you hearing me? Why? Because I don't want to lead others into seeing God and I become a signpost. Now, I expect extraordinary encounter. As he has declared it, myself, I must key into that word. Who says that I have heard people talk about you, Jesus, but this month of July, you and I must see face to face. So that means as wherever you are, make it a, make it a prayer point at Lord, give me this month a remarkable encounter that will revolutionize my life. Your amen needs total salvation. I said, lift up your voice and say, My Father, my Maker, this month of July, I agree with the heavens for me to have a remarkable encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. Tell him whatever it takes, give me and my family members a remarkable encounter a remarkable encounter with the person of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ it doesn't matter whether every day you pray the same prayer God give me a remarkable encounter with yourself Holy Ghost empower me to have a remarkable encounter with the person of Jesus Christ this month you hear what I'm saying an encounter with God interrupts whatever satanic cycle was set in motion against your life. When a man has an encounter, a cycle and satanic patterns are broken in their lives. Are you hearing me? Ordinary people become extraordinary by encounters. I've been saying all this week, an ordinary farmer became a prophet he was not among the sons of the prophet he did not qualify to be a prophet according to human standards but while he was busy looking after the 12 oxen of the oxen of his father the plowing cows the lord heaven allocated him Heaven located him for a remarkable encounter that transferred him from a farmer to a prophet. From a farmer to a prophet. Are you hearing me? And when 
you are in legislative prayer Legisl legislative prayer or intercession is whereby you pick up a biblical reference a figure and you petition God in line with that am I making myself clear when we say pray legislatively it is the, in the same way legally in an under law natural laws those of you who have studied law you understand about reference you begin to say according to the Dosset Yacht versus Home Office 2022. So you reference in the kingdom, we reference God. That's why there are some people who are praying and they made a reference to God. When Peter was called into the Apostolic Council to give a remark, to give an account why he was in the house of a Gentile, the Bible shows us in Acts 10, 34. He begins to open our eyes, 34, 35, Acts of Apostles. He's in the Apostolic Council. And he tells them um, that men of God have realized, he says, Peter opened his mouth. Everybody read with me. And Peter opened his mouth and said, most certainly and thoroughly, I now perceive, I have come to understand that God shows no partiality and is no respecter of persons. <clears throat> wow, 35. However, 35, everybody read. But in every nation, he who, somebody say he who, who venerates and has a reverential fear for God, treating him with a worship, watch, worshipful obedience and living uprightly is acceptable unto him and sure of being received and welcomed by him. He's no respecter. In other words, God has no favorites. It is your, it is your input that actually separates you from the ordinary to the extraordinary. It is by reason of your devotion that it separates you from the called to the chosen. Somebody said to be separated from the called to the chosen is by reason of your devotion. That's why Jesus says many are called, but a few are chosen. It is not that God handpicks. It is by reason of your devotion that you are translated from the called to the chosen. Are you hearing me? It's not that there are special few people that have a special grace. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. All of us who are called in the same way, under the same grace, the same calling, but it is your extra that brings you from the the called to the chosen. Are you hearing me? They are not men with a special grace and women with a special grace, but a special devotion. It is your extra devotion, your extra commitment that separates you from the ordinary and it takes you into the extraordinary. Stop admiring men and women, yet you are among those that can be. When you understand it's a divine invitation for all, you have no room to fear any man. Because he's not a respecter of persons. What he can do through Apostle Moses, what he can do through any other apostle and prophet, he can do so much through you. Will you put in the work? Will you seize and say, I, it's a personal choice, I will not be ordinary. A personal choice that is followed by <laughs> uh, extra devotion. I said, Lord, I turn these saucepans upside down because I refuse to be ordinary. There has to be something more than what I've experienced. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? This month of July is our special month. A month because, are you hearing me? Somebody say, I will do the extra. I will pray the extra. Those of you who pray in tongues, this is a month that you must say, I'm going to pray in tongues more than every day, more than the usual. You're going to say that at least, are you hearing me? You can set your alarm if you're not, even if you are at work, you can say every hour, every two hours, I'll be whispering in tongues. You don't have to be audible for anybody to hear. You can be on that console in your office, wherever you work, and a quiet.
So your mind is set. You're saying, God, this month of July, as you are passing in the city of London, I'm available. As you are passing in this city, whatever you're doing around the world, my life is available. I am due an, a, a remarkable encounter. Am I talking to somebody? Those who say, you see, I have never seen God in such a, deep, um, a deeper way. <laughs> Do something deeper. Do something extraordinary. Set your eyes on him. I want to say to you, he's no respecter of persons. Are you hearing me? What he can do through the Catherine Kuhlmans, he can do through you and I. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What he did in the Smith Wigglesworth, he can do through us. What are we going to do? Somebody say, I'm putting on the extra. Do you remember where Jesus said, when somebody asks you, take me for a mile. He said, please, Karen, take me for a mile. Jesus said, take them an extra mile. Are you hearing me? Somebody said, there is always the extra. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It separates you. It separates you from the ordinary crowd. Somebody say, I hear you. So our eyes look to you. Somebody say, Jehovah God, give me this month a remarkable encounter that will turn my house upside down in the name of Jesus. A remarkable encounter that will sweep out of my life and house whatever is not yours in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you believe it you believe it then say amen then say amen do you believe in your prayer say I believe it in the name of Jesus Christ glory to God um, that was to encourage you in this month how you should constantly be conscious of what God wants to do for us in this month. I believe this month we are going to have extraordinary testimonies. Do you understand what an extraordinary testimony is? An extraordinary miracle. I have an envelope, a big envelope here, and I will ask you as well to do it. This envelope is huge. I didn't come with it. It's in my backpack always. When I come Monday to Thursday, I come with it here. I told people, write something down. Whether three or ten, whatever you think is impossible. What has bothered you for a long time? Be it whether you or a member of your family put it down. We, we have dedicated an hour every evening to petition God. We say, you are the God of all flesh. There is nothing difficult for you. I talk, whether they are cancer on stage four, we are bringing them here. And every evening we isolate an hour and dedicate it to special prayer. And say, God, these stubborn powers behind these stubborn problems arise and deal with them. That's why I believe that even as we go deeper in petitioning God, all you have to do is write your name, no need for your contact, your name and the issues. So that we will, we will when it is done, <laughs> we will give the glory to God. Your amen needs total deliverance. Do you understand what I'm saying? We want to see God extraordinarily. Don't you see? Your miracle is always wrapped up in an instruction. The future you crave is always wrapped up in an instruction. Miracles are wrapped up in divine instructions. Jesus spits on the ground. He then smears dirt on a man's eyes. He tells him, go. Somebody say, go. That's an instruction. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Instruction. If
if that man sat down and did not carry out the instruction, he would have remained blind. He would have missed his season. A lot of people have missed their seasons because they don't pay attention to the instructions given to them. Every, the future you crave is wrapped up in an instruction. When you apply or obey the instruction, it manifests. So the man went with an instruction, washed his eyes and received his sight. What does it take from you to write something? I'm not the one to answer it. I'm not the one to do it. He is the one. And we want to hold him accountable to his word. You said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything difficult for me? No. Since there is nothing difficult to you, then arise and sort this one out. Whose reputation is at risk? Mine or his? <laughs> Whose reputation is at risk? God's reputation. But the last time I checked, he keeps his word. And because his word is his reputation, the name of the Lord be praised. Church, the name of the Lord be praised. I want to talk to us about the power, the mystery and the power in the blood of Jesus. Since we are going to have communion and make our decrease, this is a very special Sunday as we take authority over this month. And if you are here and you believe so, say amen. Children of God, are you ready for the word? <laughs> now, there are things, let me start like this. If you are the devil, and you know that there is a weapon that you are not able to handle, but it is very destructive and powerful, what do you do to nullify or render useless or powerless that weapon in the hands of your opponent? The first thing you're going to do is to ensure that you desensitize the man with the weapon. Or you make the person ignorant of the power of the weapon. Are you hearing me? I'm looking for an English word. Another word could be you belittle. Are you hearing me? You discourage the person to think that that weapon is not formidable. So once you sow a seed of doubt or ignorance, no matter how powerful the weapon your enemy has, it becomes nullified or useless. Satan has planned strategically because he understands one of the weapons that he cannot counterfeit is the weapon of the blood but he has so much strategically planned for that weapon not to be effective because he knows that that weapon he can't counterfeit he has no counterfeit for the blood for the weapon of the blood if there is anybody who is hearing what I'm saying say amen Bless the name of the Lord. I, I was praying here on Friday as I was walking around. The Holy Spirit was constantly revealing the blood of Jesus Christ to me afresh in a new light. My spiritual father and mentor, my spiritual father, Apostle Tony, and my mentor, Prophet Oka, by the grace of God and I submit in humility, I one of the people that I have I have ever had teach the blood of Jesus in a deeper way. I've read books of Benny Hinn about the blood and many other preachers, but this is not to boast or to highly exalt, but I just honor and recognize that their way of teaching and expounding the blood made me to see the blood in deeper light. And as a, a faithful stu student, when somebody opens a door and a window of revelation, they, I continue to dig deeper. The Bible says in Psalms 119 that, of course, I don't mean to say that, that I'm better. I said that, he said, I have more understanding than my teachers because I meditate on your word. So, 
So for me, even when I sit down, no matter who the preacher, I always be writing my notes down. As they are preaching, I'm listening with two ears. Revelations are coming out of their teaching on a deeper level. I begin to see things on a deeper level. That's why by the time they tell us everybody stand when the service is finished, someone is finished, you still see me standing. They say lift up your hands and I'm thinking something is still coming down. I enjoy listening to the word. I pray that you'll be blessed today. Now, I've always told this until as I was praying on Friday, the Holy Spirit had to correct me. I said... We've always heard the preachers say, and I've said it before, that the first blood to be shed in the Bible was shed where? Genesis, we said Genesis chapter 3, after Adam had sinned, isn't it? And the blood of an animal, isn't it? To counter their sin. And the Holy Spirit told me, you're wrong. That wasn't the first blood. It was the second blood. It was not the first in time, but the second blood. The first one was shed before the foundations of the earth. Follow me. Revelation says, put it up, massive for me. says, worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Please follow me closely to understand the mystery of the blood. It won't leave you the same. Are you hearing this? What the devil doesn't want you to have a revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lay your own hand, your right hand of authority on your own eyes. And say, my father, my maker, open the eyes of my spirit man. Grant me supernatural revelation and understanding of the power and the mystery hidden in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Somebody read. All who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life. Of the, in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of what? So Jesus, the blood, there's blood that was slain before the foundations of the world. The Holy Spirit took me deeper into that scripture as I was praying. Have you ever had a, a moment that takes you into, just a moment, but the revelation is, it, it, it will take you two months to write down the things you have received in a moment. This is what was happening to me as I was praying there on Friday. I even dared not to bother to speak about it when I was preaching. Now listen to me. Hebrews 11.3 says what? It says that we understand that through faith by the word of God were the heavens what? Uh -huh, uh -huh. By faith we understand. Everybody read. We understand that the universe was created by what? By the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of the things that are visible. What is seen was not made out of the things that are visible, but of invisible. So in the supernatural, the reality is not what we have seen in the physical. What we see in the physical is just a manifestation of the reality that has already existed in the supernatural. I repeat for you to think. I'll hold it for you to think. The sun manifests in the physical. Then we see it. But so that the things which we are seeing, put this for me in New Living Translation, please. So that the things that we see now see, look, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So what you see did not come out of the things that are seen, but from the things that are invisible and seen. So before the sun was seen in the physical, was existing in the supernatural, 
So when God had the idea of the son, the moment he conceived it, it became a reality before it manifested. So what you are calling a, a, a reality of the son, it is just a reflection or a manifestation of the reality. Its reality is in the supernatural. So, but I'm talking to you about the blood that was shed in the supernatural before Jesus came on earth to rehearse. The blood was shed in the supernatural to counter. Are you hearing me? It was shed in anticipation to the failures of man and the satanic and the satanic coup to take over our dominion. There was a demonic coup and Adam committed treason by handing over the dominion and power that was ours to the devil. But God in his forward knowledge, he had already seen that and the blood was shed before the foundations of the earth in the realm of, listen, before there were foundations of this earth, blood was shed in the supernatural. And as I was praying, listen to the things that was coming down. He told me, it started with this statement. Before, it says, before any alteration, blood is, he said every, this is how it came. Before any alteration, blood is shed. Before anything is altered, blood is shed. Blood must be so powerful that it is the only thing that was shed before the foundations of the earth. What does that mean? If blood was shed before the foundations of the earth, hmm? blood formed the foundation of the earth. I don't think you heard me. It formed the foundations of the earth. Because before the foundations of the earth, blood was shed. So it forms the foundation upon which the blood, the, the foundation of the earth was shed. So should we choose to say the pervert, Satan, who was always with God, he understands that before anything is initiated, before anything is erected, you must set the foundation of the blood upon it. That's why the satanic sons of darkness, in my book, I'm writing here this, which is called Demystifying Spiritual Warfare and the Satanic Attacks. I say, the sons of wickedness know what the sons of light don't know. And by reason of what they know is what puts them ahead of us. The sons of darkness, by reason of Satan, you see, Satan is a thief. What does he steal? Satan steals wisdom. He steals knowledge. And he uses it to his own advantage. Is the church listening to what I'm saying here? He steals what? And he uses it to his own advantage in a perverted form. Perversion is twisted form. He uses that wisdom or knowledge to serve his own purpose. James tells us in his book, that there are three types of wisdoms at work. Somebody say wisdoms. There is man's wisdom, there is godly wisdom, and the satanic or demonic wisdom. Demonic wisdom in James, it is stolen. Look for it, James chapter, I think, 2. It talks about demonic wisdom. And this wisdom, there are three types of wisdom. Are you paying attention? Now, look how he steals. 
Sons of darkness, when you buy a land, what do they do? They, in, they, they do what? They sacrifice, isn't it? They say, even they say this, oh, you don't know the previous owners, you know you need to appease the gods. If they don't slaughter, they do a libation. Anybody understands what the term libation means? I will explain. A libation, they get, some of them get liquor. Or Omwange Muganda, local brew. In Kenya, Changa. Wherever you come from, Kwete. Aha, Kwete. Those kind of drinks. And they, Echiwa? Echigaj. And you know what they do? They drink. They, before they drink, when they buy land, they buy it and pour it to appease the gods of the land. It's called libation. It is in every culture. When you see something wildly, globally recognized, understand Satan is behind it. In Chinese, in Asia, everywhere I have gone, they do libations. They first pour to appease the God of the land before they drink. That's why when you take that thing in a, in a Baganda culture, when you go for introduction... They used to ask you to come with a chita. A chita, a chita chomwenge, a local brew, in a, that big, huge calabash. What do they do when you come for introduction, when you give it to them? They first pour it to the ground to appease the gods, and they connect you to that altar during your introduction. They now appease the gods of the clan to come after you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking to you, there is demonic wisdom. And godly. Now, a lot of people don't understand the existence of demonic wisdom. That's why God doesn't want us to tap into the demonic wisdom. Satan wanted so much in the beginning. It says, if you eat from this tree, you will know the knowledge of good and evil. Satan wanted to introduce man to another type of wisdom, of evil wisdom that God did not want man to tap into. Is anyone listening here? Now, <laughs> when you build a house in our culture, and I mean any other culture, I've seen it in Kenya as well, house dedication my sister comes from west africa they do that they slaughter you don't they say if you don't if you enter the house without slaughtering some people die in that house so they're not blessed so what do they do even now when people are building what's the first thing when they're building a house what do they lay on the foundation of the house in the culture you come from, before they build, they slaughter a goat. To lay the foundation, to dedicate this house to the gods of the ancestors they've been serving. So that forms the foundation for your house and your family. What I'm trying to say to you, where did they get sons of darkness and witches and wizards? Where do they get where did they get that idea? They stole it from God. Worthy is the lamb who was slain before the foundations of the earth. Satan understood a trick. He didn't understand. So, oh oh, that's how you counted me by blood. Hmm. Okay. So this issue is about certain wishes that he and his demons were capable of producing blood. That's the only thing demons and Satan cannot. They have no way to produce blood. That's why they use human blood. But the one running in your veins is a supernatural, holy, godly, divine blood. So no matter their sacrifices... 
when we engage our own, it is blameless and divine. It is royal, kingly, divine blood. They have nothing to do against it. Do you understand? Now what happens is he gets us to be ignorant of the blood and its application and usage. Many people, they seldom apply the blood in their pray prayers and daily living. Let me say this to you. In all weapons of our warfare, when everything has, has a, it seems to be not working, there is a nuclear weapon called the blood of Jesus Christ. Please understand this. The blood was shed in eternity. Are you hearing me? Now, this is not a lie. <laughs> it's not a joke. Worthy is the lamb that was slain before what? In the, now, please watch this. Many times, including the preacher here, I preached saying, John, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming to him at the Jordan, he said, now behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I said, and just like any other preacher, he was referring to the Levitical order where animals were being slaughtered for our tournament. Jesus is our tournament sacrifice, true. But John was speaking beyond the Levitical order. John was talking about the one Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the earth. John must have tapped into Revelation. And when he saw, because remember he never knew who he was, it was revealed to him that the one upon whom this happens, now when he saw him, says, oh, now behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John went before time and went into eternity and he saw this Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the earth. What was Jesus doing? When Jesus now through the gate of a woman, he's born into the earth. Are you listening to me? When through the gate of the woman is birthed into time, he only put on flesh to come to rehearse that which he had already settled in eternity. That's why he tells Pontius Pilate, <laughs> when he tells him, defend yourself, defend your reputation. You know, I'm a, I, I can free you, I can say you don't die. He says, you have no power. He says, the son of man <laughs> has power to lay down his life. He didn't say die, lay down his life and pick it up. Why? He's trying to tell him, <laughs> I'm here to rehearse that which I already settled in the eternity. Should we choose to say, somebody say, as he is in this life. So, as he is, Jesus, give us to that scripture, Matthew. I mean, Master, preach with me, my sister. Um, first John chapter, first John chapter what? Four and verse 17. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, <laughs> as he is Jesus Christ in this world, so are you. Read it. Love has been perfected among us in this, in what? That we have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now how is Jesus? Jesus is his blood. I don't think you heard me. Jesus is his what? Would you, so would you mean Jesus is his blood? His blood is his life. His life is his blood. And his blood he gave to me. Which is his life that he gave to me. So as he is, by reason of the blood, that's why I can come now to the judgment seat. Are you hearing me? This is the boldness that I have. That as I come in, I'm coming in. It's not Moses coming in. I am coming in in the person of the blood. His name is Jesus Christ. So that's why the Bible says love has been perfected among us in this, in this quotation, in this. 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Somebody said, because as he is, so are we in this world. So then let me take you further. How he is in this world. <laughs> Jesus appeared on planet, eh? are you hearing me? To rehearse that which he already established in eternity. Can I talk to you for a minute? You existed before you came through the birth canal of a woman. Eh? That's why David by revelation in Psalm 16 and verse 6, he says, The lines of destiny, <laughs> the lines of destiny are fallen for me in pleasant places. Somebody read the lines. I put that. What are those lines? Somebody said demarcations. Supernatural demarcations were initiated, established, and fallen. Somebody, God didn't say will fall. David, by revelation, says the lines of destiny have fallen to me in a pleasant places. What does that mean? Your destiny was preordained before you came into time. You are here to rehearse. <laughs> Hey, you are rehearsing. That's why the Bible says you are not blessed. You will not be blessed. You are already blessed. So your responsibility, somebody said my responsibility, is to reinforce. It is to activate that which was already established. So when you say, I am the righteousness of Christ, of God in Christ, what are you doing? You are activating. You are aligning yourself with that which was already settled. I hear the Holy Ghost say, tell them. Some says, your word is forever settled in the heavens. Are you? Now, now the problem is you see yourself as flesh. Let me also take you to another level. As he is, somebody say, as he is in this world, Jesus Christ so am I. Is Jesus the word of God? I don't hear. Is Jesus the word of God? Did you know you are the word of God? Uh, I said, did you know you are the word of God? Uh, you're saying, I, I am the word. What do you mean? First, James chapter 1 and the verse 18 says, Heavenly Daddy of his own will, who? Daddy. Of his own will, Daddy in heaven chose to be to what he brought us forth how are we born read by the how are, how are you brought forth <laughs> by the word of what so that you might be what so that you might be the kind of the first fruits of his creatures the first fruits of his creatures are you hearing me the first fruit of of a certain kind <laughs> you have never existed anywhere. That's why they call you new creation. <laughs> you have never existed anywhere. Now, if you were brought forth, please put it in amplified classic. So that people will see the details. Somebody say, I love being born again. <laughs> I'm glad I'm born again. <laughs> now, let us read the scripture and everybody go. And it was of his own will. I didn't ask him. <laughs> no. How many of you did Aaron get up one morning and say, Are you see, you mommy and daddy, I choose you to be my parents. Uh -uh. It was of their own will. They met somewhere and something extraordinary of their own, of their own will brought forth Aaron. So I'm talking about you beyond them. It, it is not you who consulted God. It was not of your own will and my own will to be born born again born again it was of his own will that he gave us birth you see in bracket as what by his what how are you born by the word of truth what makes you a son of god birth by the word of truth are you hearing me so you became the first kind the first a sample are you hearing me what does it mean first fruits of his creature of his creatures a sample of what he created 
to be consecrated, meaning to be separated to him. You are my own. Separated to him. There is this holy jealous, a separated to me. Be careful how you treat another believer. I said, be careful how you treat another believer. Every believer is separated unto God for him. That's why when me and my wife fell out and separated and divorced, as I was busy saying, my father, hmm? the way he was communicating with me, um, when you go through the, the, the fire and the water, I am with you. There's something he was telling her on the other side. Don't you think that he's telling the other person another different story? <laughs> but what I want to say, why? Because you're all his children. Now pay attention to this. Monkeys give birth to what? And the gods give birth to what? The word gives birth to what? I said the word gives birth to what? You are brought forth by the word of who? So what gave you birth? Are you hearing me? Whose DNA do you carry in your blood? Whose DNA do you carry? Every man is a carrier of the DNA of his father. The word here, first fruit, is talking about a seed. In which we have in Greek, the Greek is the word zira. Sorry, in Hebrew, zira. And then when you take it in Hebrew, so, sorry, in Greek, in Hebrew, zira, which means a godly seed. A godly what? When you take it back into Greek, it's called spermata, where we get the English word sperm. The God seed. I am a carrier of the seed. I am a seed of God. You can dress a tree. But you can dress a seed, a tree back to its seed, and the seed back to the tree. So who you are a product of your of the word of God. Who are you? I am the word of God. I carry the DNA of my daddy. Satan does not want you to believe these things. Yeah? He, he, he begins to feel, is this a right teaching? I said, if you are a son of God, whose DNA do you carry in your blood? Do you know what exempts us from manifesting the supernatural? Is by reason of foolish humility. Ignorant humility. And say, hey, hmm. If I said those things, I am the seed of the word. Eh? I am the word of God. As the word of God, I decree and declare something. Eh? You say you are the word of God. This, this kind of mindset, perception, it is what rightfully positions you in dominion over Satan. Ephesians 3.10 says we are to teach principalities. We are to sit principalities. <laughs> you know, Ephesians 6 says, <laughs> 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yet before we get to wrestling, we have taught them a lesson. <laughs> Read Ephesians, is it 3.10? It says as we teach principalities. If it's not 3.10, 4.10, look for me please. Are you hearing me? We teach principalities. The manifold wisdoms of God. Are you hearing me? The manifold wisdom of God. Are you somebody listening to me? We're talking about the mystery of the blood of the Lamb of God. Somebody read. To the intent. Please read. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by who? Who is the church? Sons of God. Who is the church? By the church. To who? And the powers where? So the church is here to teach the principalities and powers to sit them in the class and educate them. Did I write that? But the church is still this, 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 the, the church 
instead of teaching principalities and powers of darkness, the manifold wisdom of God, they are busy bickering with each other. They are the ones teaching us a lesson. You see, that's when I say this. Can I say something? You are either a demonstration of divine virtues or a, or a satanic experiment in the living. Can I say? You are either a demonstration in life a demonstration and expression of divine virtues and glory or you are a satanic experiment in the living somebody asked me when I was invited 2017 to pray for the rain when Kenya had a drought. And by, I submit this humbly. Great men of all fathers in Kenya gathered. And they called little me. Small me stood over there. But by reason of wisdom and revelation. And my understanding of my dominion. I began to say. I speak to the oceans. The water sources. You and I we are servants of the almighty God. So we should, you need to comply with me because I am of a higher dimension. Because you know that in Psalms 8, 6, God made me a little lower than the angels and crowned me with glory and honor and dominion over the powers of the air, even the sea. You are under my jurisdiction and the supernatural authority. I command the ocean water levels to begin to arise. You, sun, begin to coordinate with the oceans. And I command the condensation to begin to take place. As I pray, I command the heavens.